So this question, it's focused on XBRL. That stands for Extensible Business Reporting Language. Unfortunately, it's not asking us what the acronym stands for, right? So we need to understand what it actually means. So if you've ever gone online to a public company's financial statements, say on sec.gov, well, you'll notice that they have an XBRL formatted financial statement. And basically, this is because public companies are required to submit their financial statements in XBRL format so that there's consistency across all financial statements for every company that issues them with the SEC. So let's focus on understanding how it works. So a company would prepare their financial statements using their trial balance, right? And then they're going to have the PDF copy of the financial statements. Now, they could upload this to the internet for the public to view, but then somebody's going to have to go in, find revenue, right? What if they just want to know what revenue is for a specific company? Well, step number one is where somebody at the company in the accounting or finance department, they tag individual financial line items using a taxonomy. So a taxonomy is like a structure. Think about it as we have to assign something to revenue or something to assets. Basically, we just have to tag all financial statement data to a specific taxonomy. So once every bit of the financial statements has been tagged, the instance document is generated. So you don't really need to know this, but let's just talk about it just so you do. An instance document is an XML file. It's basically all of the data that has been tagged in a specific taxonomy. Now, it's not going to be very easy for humans to read. It looks like code. And so step number three is where XBRL software converts this instance document to financial statements that are readable by humans. So now that the financial statements are in XBRL format on the internet, well, it makes this very easy for financial information for a specific company to be searched for because it's been tagged using XBRL, right? So that's how it works. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say that we have three different companies. We have Jet Ski Company, Yacht Company, and Speedboat Company. Now, with no XBRL in their financial statements, they may have revenue or net sales or net revenue, right? Those all mean pretty much the same thing, but the terminology is different. So with XBRL, let's say they all selected the same taxonomy. Well, they would all tag each of their respective you know, classifications to net revenue. And now with XBRL, all three of those companies now have it described as net revenue. And now it's consistent. And if we want to pull net revenue for all those three companies, it would be super easy. So that's why XBRL is beneficial to everybody involved with financial statements. Now that we have a solid understanding of XBRL, let's go through and see which of the following features relates to XBRL. So on the first one, XBRL tags define the data. Well, we just talked about it, right? That's exactly what the tagging process is. We're defining the data in the financial statements by tagging it to a specific taxonomy. That's one of the unique characteristics of XBRL compared to other formatting languages like HTML, which happens to be the next one, right? So XBRL tags define the data. That is definitely true. Let's go through the other options first, though. So XBRL is interchangeable with HTML. That is not true. XBRL focuses on tagging data and defining it to specific taxonomies. HTML is more on the presentation of information on the web, right? So that's a false statement, so it's incorrect. How about XBRL does not require the use of tags? Well, we just talked about that. Tagging is one of the key steps in XBRL. So that's going to be an incorrect statement. And then lastly, XBRL is interchangeable with SQL. So SQL is stands for standard query language, and that allows you to retrieve whatever you want, right? So SQL would be used to retrieve financial information in XBRL format, right? That's how those two are related. So that's going to be incorrect as well. So the only correct statement here is that XBRL tags define the data, right? That's one of the features of XBRL. So that's going to be our correct answer. 